Yo, 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 what's going on, man? It's the Karen Montero Show, season number four, episode number three, 50 years and counting, featuring the one and only Keegan Fields, my little cousin. Let go. You already know we about to bring it in with my latest single, Shut It Down, Let Go. Yeah, schools, yeah, yeah, yeah. For my auto tune yeah, lovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell hey, them, hey, 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 I shut it down, I shut it down. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it, so that means I'm about to drown. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody might drown. I shut it down. Shut it down. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it, so that means I'm out of town. Please just do the drill, cause I'm out of eight drops. Man, I tell them more so for the broken back. Get it again. Kobe with the broken finger. What's going on, everybody? Kyra Montero. Welcome to the Kyra Montero Show with your host once again, Kyra Montero, man. 50 years and counting, man. Episode number three of season four. Feature my cousin Keegan Fields. And for y'all, the listeners, round of applause, man. I want to encourage y'all. If you want to see a high definition video of the podcast while it's be recorded, head over to my YouTube channel, Kyra Montero. Search the Kyra Montero show. It'll definitely pop up. And make sure for all of my people that just listen to the audio version of the podcast, head over to platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, which is transitioning into YouTube, uh, Podcasts, Amazon Music, etc. man. Once again, man, round of applause, man. I got the I got the young homie Keegan Fields, man. Yeah. Bloodline, man. Little cousin, man. What's good with it, man? What up, what up, what up? What up, man? You doing all right? Yup, yup. You doing all right, man. He pulled up on me. This was unplanned. See, that's the thing when you slide around me. When I'm working and you pull up to the office, you don't know which you might find yourself in. You, you, if I'm working, then you're going to be working with me. You feel me? Yeah, so a round of applause for Cuzzo, man. We also, we want to say it is the month of February. It is 2024. It's February 12th. So we want to say happy Black History Month. Um... You know, to all of those who have won before us and put in work uh, so that we can stand on the shoulders, uh, we want to say thank you for your contributions and thank you for your hard work for what you've done. Uh, we just kind of want to take a quick moment of silence for all of the, uh, the soldiers that we've lost. All right, man, now let's give them a round of applause, man. Thank y'all. Without y'all, we could not be here. We're standing on y'all's shoulders, man. Keegan, what's good with it, man? What's up, what's up, cuz? You all right, man? Yep, yep, living life. Man, we entitled in this episode 50 Years and Counting. And I think it's fitting during Black History Month. And also, we celebrating 50 years of hip-hop. I think it's dope to talk about it, man, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's, it's definitely dope, man. So, in this episode, man, we're going to be talking about 50 Years and Counting. Now, what's interesting is I'm 33. I'll be 34 in May. Cuz I was 22. When you turn 23? Uh, January 4th. So you just turned twenty two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just turned he just turned twenty two. So, um, so it's very interesting because we come from two different eras of this hip hop thing. And so I think it's gonna be dope to kinda like, you know, just talk about it and, and from your generation's perspective and just mine. And obviously like it's people older than both of us. They yeah, got yeah. their own. I think I feel like every era and every generation got their own Everything perspective. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm exactly. saying? So I think it's gonna be gonna be dope to uh conversation to talk about so first off man we got to talk about what hip-hop is we got to talk about when it started and then we'll go from there man so we know that hip-hop started in the early 1970s um and when it started it started in the new york and started in the projects in the hood in the ghettos and it started as a way for low poverty oppressed people to have a voice and to express themselves um in in black communities and hispanic communities in america that's and and that's that's one part of it but that's a huge part of how it how it started because we didn't have a platform yeah that's crazy because i thought it started down south i never knew it started in new york it started in new york man 
That's crazy. It started so so when you think about all of the Run DMCs, the LL Cool J's, yeah. the Rock Kims, the Biggies, all you know, the Jay Z's. That's that's New York. Yeah, bro. You I know, never thought e- of that. even Def Jam being like really the, one of the first major hip hop labels. That's in New York. Yeah, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying. So so originally, it started in the early 1970s in New York, um, on the East Coast with with six different elements. DJing, MCing, aka rapping, uh, break dancing, writing, aka graffiti, theater and literature, and the knowledge of self, which is you know encompassing, you know, different spirituality and things like that. Now it, it's different because I mean we've seen all different kind of uh, faiths come in. We've seen Christianity, we've seen you know Muslim and Islam, we've seen uh, five percenters. Black Hebrew Israelites, we've seen all kind of stuff come through through hip hop. Um, but those are kind of the things, is man. So yeah, man. When it when it started, it was a way for non. How do I say? Like I said, it was a way for the black community, black and brown communities, to express ourselves. Yeah, and come together. Uh, and come together, man. And and so seeing how it's kind of like taking form from becoming this underground thing. That started on the East Coast to now, now it's like this international just movement yeah, everybody and culture, it. yeah. And so it's crazy to to see um, how hip hop is has started, um, and so that's the origins of it, and that's the foundations of it. Kind of just without being too long, um, but I think as we move into this next point, the the nineties era. Is when we really seen yeah, hip hop right really there. go n- like national and global for yeah. real, for real. Um, you know, you got like Nas released Illmatic in the nineties, things like that. But when hip hop really leveled up is when Biggie and Pac came along. Yeah, yeah, the East Coast West Coast beef. Just period. You know what I'm saying? When you, you know, when you had all kind of labels on the e- record labels on the East Coast, you had Bad Boy. Uh, loud records. You had uh, obviously Def Jam. Um, you had Rockefeller Records later on, kind of getting started up. Rough Riders. There's just like there's too many to name. You know what I'm saying? But you had all of these record labels starting to come up on the West Coast. You had you know Death Row Records. What what Dr. Dre then was doing. You know, eventually Dr. Dre found the aftermath, and you just had you know all kind of stuff on the West Coast. Priority Records, like so. You had just this this. The nineties is where things really started. What is your recollection? How like how how informed is, are you at twenty two of kind of like the nineties era? Uh, I'm not too much, not too much. Like okay. I know like Tupac, Biggie, all that, but I only knew like half of what you said. Okay, okay, yeah, man. So the the nineties is really because you got to think even like the production of hip hop, like it wasn't like now where you got dudes making original beats, right. stuff like like dudes was sampling. Yeah. Like dudes was taking samples and then laying DJ, yeah, you know, laying beats stuff. over yeah. R and B records and stuff like that. So it's like you know, dudes might hear a part of a song like, "Man, that piano part is crazy," and then take that, chop it up, and do what yeah. they do, and then put dr- beats That's to like it. The creative part of it, though. That's yeah, no, it's it. definitely an art form to it, but it just was different. Yeah, it wasn't like you got dudes. Hopping on the keys now, really yeah. composing stuff originally. It was it was just a totally different um, era. But yeah, man, that the nineties I feel like is where hip hop really became like yeah, commercially. The year. Yeah, the yeah. Year. yeah, yeah. It definitely became commercial, and you know, after that, I feel like I feel like where you see hip hop now, a lot of the business with record labels and a lot of the way things are done really stem back. From yeah. that foundation that was built in the nineties. Yeah, it's a business now, it's not a passion. Well, I mean, it was a business in, in the eighties, definitely. Like I said, with LL Cool J and people like that, like Def Jam was around in the eighties. But I feel like it like I said, it really leveled up. Mm, okay. You okay. really start seeing boys going platinum and like like the touring and everything, like yeah. the nineties is when that really, really yeah. happened, man. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. So anything you wanna add to that? Uh no, not really. It's really like the streaming pop platforms, Instagram and all that, that's what really helped it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like that helped like the two thousand babies grow and stuff with the music. 
I really like that. Yeah, because y'all able to go back. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With streaming, y'all able to go back. You able, of course, you want to lie to. You don't remember being able to go to a record store yeah, and nah, do this and do that. So man. the fact that you can go on your phone on Apple Music, Title, Spotify, or whatever, and just look stuff up, go to YouTube and learn. Like, yeah. like it's it it teach you about things for sure. Um, which bring me to this next thing that's that's kind of crazy, man. And as, as we just reflect on kind of overview of hip hop, it's crazy to think about how the consumption of of hip hop has changed. You know, so like I was a '90s baby, so when I came up. Cassettes was in mm. now, now obviously vinyl records Have have, have always Existed As kind of like You know Really one of the first Global kind of uh, yeah. Way people Like mediums Music was on I look like To be honest with you <laughs> Yeah and then, I mean so you kind of I mean there was things Before vinyl But you kind of went through that In the whole vinyl era Then the cassettes came in And then eventually CDs came in Yeah okay And CDs Ran the game for Yeah that's my years right there A right? long time uh, and then eventually, digital sales came in. So stuff like Amazon and iTunes, yeah. where people were still buying music, but you just downloaded it, which that's still around. And then now it's all streaming. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And now it's all like it's crazy because now it's just about the hip like. The money of hip hop has changed. Yeah, yeah, the business, yeah. But it's opened up a lot of doors. With streaming and social media, um, the way that people can get money is is crazy. So so tell me for you being twenty two, man, like going back, looking at where hip hop has came from, learning about it and then listening to it. Like, what what does that look like for you? It's totally different. I'm not gonna lie. Like in the 90s, it's more like it was based off love and stuff like that. Now it's based off killing, shooting. Like the music scene changed. Everything different now. Well, I, I will say that was around in the 90s. Yeah, but. Street, Biggie I, and Pac was definitely talking street stuff. Jay, but I think it was more. Like diss tracks and stuff, though, now. Like now they make diss tracks over the dead bodies, dead people, all that. So that's like what's really making stuff worse now. Yeah. I think, I think the content. Um, Right now has went down. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like, I feel like the talent level of hip hop has went down over the years. Yeah, yeah. Cause there's um, too many people. It's hard to find the talent when it's so many people out here trying to do their own way. Well, I feel like record labels didn't like back in the day. Record labels used to help develop artists. Yeah, they looking for the wrong shit uh, stuff now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like record labels. I mean, you're right. Uh, they like record labels. They they used to spend time in developing artists. Yeah. It kind of go back to like the Motown days with Barry Gordy and like you know the the oh, Jacksons yeah, and the Temptations and all of that. Yeah, that's you know Stevie Wonder, all of them. They they you would spend time molding and developing. Okay, trying to make artists be around for the long run. Yeah, okay. Trying to see artists have a ten year plus career, yeah, not yeah. sixty days. Yeah. And so now with everybody, you know, you can make a song on your phone now. Anybody can go buy equipment. So it's kind of just like that level of development is kind of left. Yeah, I get that. And people feel like they don't need it no more. Yeah. Which is whack. It's the entitlement and stuff that we was talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. They're like like new artists are definitely, definitely, um, it, it, it just seems like it's, it's, it's entitled, man. So, so let me ask you this. When you go back, you listen to hip hop from the early two thousands. You listen to it from the nineties, the eighties, or whatever, and then you listen to it today. Yeah. Like, like go into it a little bit from your perspective at twenty two. What's the difference you hear? You know, from older generations to now. So from the pot, the biggies, the Jay Z's, the Lil Wayne's, the Ti, the Jeezy's, and Rick Ross's. You know, all the way up to it's like people the, right now yeah it's like the lyrics changed like what people talk about now is totally different like like i was saying before it was everybody was talking about love and stuff in the 90s it was talking about making love now they talk about shooting killing like it's really getting dead to this point to be honest with you i ain't gonna lie so do you feel like at your age like do you get tired of listening to it yeah like i listen to more r&b than i do rap okay to be honest with you 
Like, it be getting tiring. Like, it's the same stuff, same beats. People be rapping over the same beats nowadays. So it's like. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like the, the talent level went down? Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. It's too many people. Like, everybody trying to do their own stuff. So it's like when everybody trying to do their own stuff, it's hard to pick out that one person that's. It's oversaturated. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You got you to gotta funnel through and look at stuff. I, You know, I try not to sound like the OG now that just hate on today's music because I don't. I think there's stuff in today's music because, I mean, by the way, I'm still dropping music. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, go get my latest single, Shut It Down, yeah. right now. New single, Stand On Business, coming March 1st, 2024. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm still dropping stuff, and I'm still like we just signed cats to the label, to, to a label like hip-hop. So it's like, and I plan, like, I would love to get somebody in your age group. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To help represent this culture, but it's just like. They don't listen. Well, it's just, man, it's just a talent thing to me, bro. I just like, are you going to be around yeah, yeah. five years from now, 10 years, 20 years? Like, it don't seem like nobody's thinking about that yeah, type of stuff. Like, people be trying to, they, want, they don't think of it as a long-term career. They just want to get out the door with that. Like, that's all they want to do. They want to start rapping and then start getting into some business stuff. Like, or, like, most of the dudes that nowadays, they want to get into the trapping. That's what they stuck into, trapping and rapping. So they can't ever pick one. You got to make, it, you gotta make uh, your trap legal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You, you, that's, that's how you got to go about it, man. Um, we kind of talked about, you know, how stuff was different from before, what it is now. Uh, and, and we just having bite sized talks, you know. Yeah. We had to, I, I, we had to do four or five podcasts episode, ten of them to really go in. But you know, I just kind of want to spark the the origin of, of of a conversation. You know, let me ask you this: What's up? Let's talk about where where you feel like hip hop and rap is is going because, like you said, it's a lot of killing. It's a lot of it seems like any and everybody getting on right now. I so, like, so what do you feel like? What do you feel like that's doing, and where is it? How is that damaging us, and where is it going? Go to be honest with you, I think the music always going to be around just because the business businesses and the labels. But I feel like it's on a decline, like just like with the talent and stuff like that. They not doing nothing. They not really want to rap for real. They not want to put stuff out, like be creative with their art. They don't see it as art. Mm. They just see it as music. And music is art, you know what I'm saying? And music is about the feeling and emotion. Yeah. Um, and, and just to clarify, the 90s one and early 2000s stuff, it wasn't just talking about love, because you, you listen to, like, Pac had this records. Mm. Biggie did this records. Jaden was talking street stuff. Cash Money Records yeah. was talking street stuff. I mean, even if you go back to the 80s, like N.W.A., yeah, but it yeah. wasn't every song though. Like, nah, nah, well, it wasn't every song, but it was present though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You think about Jay Z. Jay Z was talking about selling crack and stuff, yeah. and how he came from the hood and and went into business. Yeah, and 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 Jay always, even to this day, if he drops something, there's gonna be that street element yeah, to yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So I I think that the culture is just taking that and just made it what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? So, hey, man, I just wanted to do an episode with Lil Cuzzo, man. I was going to do this by myself, but round of applause for Keegan, man. I appreciate you coming on. 100 to 100. I definitely appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, man, if y'all want to listen to the podcast, man, make sure that y'all check the podcast out. Once again, on things like Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, which is now turning into YouTube Podcasts, uh, and all of the major digital streaming uh, platforms that podcasts exist on. This is the Kyra Montero Show. This is season four, episode number three, called 50 Years and Counting. Don't be shy if we zone in and we may, we, you never know, we might have a part two, part three, part four with some different people to this because I think there's different age groups. It's crazy to think that hip hop is 50, 50 years old now. It started as something they said would be a fad. They said it, it wasn't even supposed to last this long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, here we are, still standing. Well, go, still going strong. Still yeah. going strong. And to tell you the truth is like, I don't see it. I don't. I, I agree with you. I don't see hip hop music going away. Um, I do see it. It does seem like it's been on a decline a little bit. I do wish that the talent level would step up. I do wish that the content and the, and the substance of the music would exist more. But the truth of the matter is, is that. I don't think that is going to go nowhere, man. Um, I think that it's here to stay. I think that is 
there's nothing you're going to be able to do um, to remove it because, once again, we've been around this long. You know what I'm saying? So if we've been around this long, if we've been around 50, we're going to be another around another 50. Exactly. Then we're going to be around another 50 after that. So, hey, man, once again, man, shout out to Hip Hop. Salute. Happy birthday, Hip Hop. Happy Black History Month. We're going to give you all my latest single, Shut It Down, and we're going to get out this thing, man. Appreciate y'all giving us a little listening here today, man. You feel me? Yeah, schools, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I shut it down. I shut it down. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it, so that means I'm about to clown. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody may drown. I shut it down, shut it down. I'm levitating, so that means I'm off the ground. I'm feeling it, so that means I'm about to clown. Please excuse the drip, cause somebody may drown. Yeah, boy, it's so for the broken back at it again. Caught me with the broken finger, we about to win. Pain the devil, throw him nosy, nagging all on my I look at him and grin, man. Hey, man, y'all make sure that y'all go check out the Kyra Montero show on all platforms, man. Share, like, subscribe. Tell your family about it. All right? We out this thing, man. Peace and love.